For investors, we believe a big idea needs to be long-term. But with more innovation evolving than ever before, how are investors supposed to identify the technologies that could deliver future growth? ARC began publishing big ideas in 2017 to showcase the latest developments across innovation. We aim to keep up with the accelerating pace of change so you don't miss out on potential long-term investment opportunities. 2021 marks the fifth year ARC has published Big Ideas. As a result of extensive and iterative research, we quantify multi-year value chain transformations and market opportunities. We model cost curves and calculate elasticity of demand to identify entry points for tech-enabled disruption so that investors can stay on the right side of change. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be covering the deep learning section of ARK Invest Big Ideas 2021 report. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So here we are looking at ARK Invest Big Ideas 2021 report, specifically focusing on deep learning. And I just want to give you guys a little bit of information to give you guys the gist on why ARK published this research. I quote, ARK aims to identify large-scale investment opportunities by focusing on who we believe to be the leaders, enablers, and beneficiaries of disruptive innovation. While we believe innovation is the key to growth, the opportunities it creates can be missed or misunderstood by traditional investment managers who are more focused on sectors, indexes, short-term earnings, and price movements. And I wholeheartedly agree here. ARK Invest are really doing pioneering research in terms of investment opportunities for the future, now I know that at the moment some of their ideas sound a little bit out there, a little bit early, a little bit hard to understand. That is the whole point of ARC publishing this research and why I'm going a little bit deeper just on deep learning today. And of course, there's a link in the description of the full report, which I highly recommend you guys both download and read. Deep learning. Deep learning could be the most important software breakthrough of our time. And I just wanna jump in here. That is a pretty significant statement, but I wholeheartedly agree. Until recently, humans programmed all software. Deep learning, a form of artificial intelligence, uses data to write software. By automating the creation of software, deep learning could turbocharge every industry. According to ARK's research, deep learning will add $30 trillion to the global equity market capitalization during the next 15 to 20 years. So let's just take a pause here. $30 trillion is a rather large number. In fact, it's absolutely enormous. And ARC are onto something here. So for those of you who don't have a comprehensive understanding of deep learning, effectively, and this is a super simplified example, effectively, deep learning is a type of computation that mimics the way a human brain works. Data is fed in, the brain reacts to that data, learns from that data, and improves. You may have heard of some examples of this in the past, kicking world champions' asses in games like chess, and then go. Deep learning algorithms have also taught themselves to absolutely dominate classic video games, even finding new and creative ways to beat high scores and time records as well. So there's an element of creativity to deep learning as well. The gist here is if you have enough computational power and enough data coming in, you can achieve outstanding, astonishing results. And we're now starting to see some of these deep learning algorithms contribute meaningfully to science, medicine and many other technologies and we're just at the beginning deep learning is software 2.0 we can see here software 1.0 code written by humans versus software 2.0 code written by data let's quickly go over the timeline in the 70s commercial software began in the 80s object-oriented programming made software reusable and increased its scale and capability dramatically just with the advent of the home personal computer really starting to take off in the 2000s, the internet democratized software, growing the market from millions to billions of people. We also, around this time, started to see the open source idea. In 2012, Deep Neural Networks won the ImageNet challenge, marking the beginning of the deep learning software 2.0 era. 
And by the way, for those of you that don't know, the ImageNet challenge effectively at this time was to identify the dogs. The algorithms went from pretty ordinary with a relatively high error rate to 2012 to actually winning the challenge and huge progress has been made since. And in terms of software 2.0, code written by data, in 2020, deep learning powered almost all large scale internet services, including search, social media and video recommendations. Shout out to everybody watching on YouTube who's been recommended lots of videos that they've watched in the past. Why? Because deep learning knew that that was a better recommendation for you than some monkey sitting behind a computer trying to decide what you'd like to watch. And by monkey, I mean human. The point here is now we've really reached a point where deep learning is having a meaningful impact economically across a broad range of industries and we're still just getting started. During the next decade, we believe the most important software will be created by deep learning, enabling self-driving cars, shout out to Tesla, accelerated drug discovery, shout out to the genomics, longevity and healthcare industries, and more. Deep learning is creating the next generation of computing platforms. Conversational computers, powered by AI, smart speakers answered 100 billion voice commands in 2020, 75% more than in 2019. I think most of you guys have been using voice recognition software and voice commands for a few years will have noticed the marked improvement recently. Self-driving cars. Waymo's autonomous vehicles have collected more than 20 million real-world driving miles across 25 cities. And uh, need I remind you, Tesla's vehicles have collected billions of real-world miles. Hence, they've already won the race, as I've mentioned many times on this channel. Consumer apps. TikTok, which uses deep learning for video recommendations, has outgrown Snapchat and Pinterest combined. Well, fancy that. And as we know, YouTube is also using deep learning for video recommendations, and I don't need to explain how effective those are. Most of you guys get on YouTube to watch one or two videos and end up going down a rabbit hole every single time. You can thank deep learning superior recommendations for that. Deep learning requires boundless computational power. While advances in hardware and software have been driving down AI training costs by 37% per year, which by the way, just jumping in here, is a ridiculous decline in costs compounded over time. Anyway, the size of AI models is growing much faster, 10 times per year. As a result, total AI training costs continue to climb. We believe that state-of-the-art AI training model costs are likely to increase a hundredfold from roughly 1 million today to more than 100 million by 2025. We can see here a pretty steady and predictable trend which ARC is projecting out into the future. I don't see any reason to dispute this whatsoever. Deep learning is creating a boom in AI chips. As AI training costs grow from 1 to 100 million per project, specialized processes such as GPUs or TPUs will account for a majority of the incremental growth. ARC estimates that data center spending on AI processes will scale more than fourfold during the next five years, from $5 billion a year today to $22 billion per year in 2025. The upcoming deployment phase for deep learning will democratize access to AI, benefiting not only large internet companies, but also every industry in the economy. We see here ARC is projecting a 33% compound annual growth rate in the total AI chip market. Not going to make any recommendations here, but the information would suggest that there's probably an investment thesis to be made for some of the AI chip makers. And by the way, for those of you who watch the channel and follow along, you'll know that Tesla recently developed their own chip. They also have the Tesla Dojo training system, which Elon Musk recently mentioned on a Tesla earnings call, may become a service, as in Dojo as a service, some neural network training as a service, much like today, Amazon's web service is a huge driver of the company's profitability and growth, which was originally developed as internal technology, then became a service. Tesla's looking to take the same path with their Dojo software. AI is expanding from vision to language. 2020 was the breakthrough year for conversational AI. For the first time, AI systems could understand and generate language with human-like accuracy. Conversational AI requires 10 times the computing resources of computer vision and should spur large investments in the coming years. I actually found this a little surprising. Maybe this is just my naive human brain reasoning here, poorly. But I was kind of under the impression that vision would be more difficult to solve than language. 
But hey, the evidence is already there, so I can't really say much more on this. I was wrong in my assumptions. They've been proven otherwise. I've known this for a few years now, but it still surprises me. And we can see here the training timeline for different AI systems. We've got the pre-AI era, the computer vision era, a tenfold increase in terms of language understanding, and then a 10 times increase in terms of reinforcement learning, which is where we're at now. OpenAI's GPT-3 is the first AI that understands language. Now, for those of you that don't know, OpenAI is a company that was co-founded by Elon Musk a number of years ago with the mission effectively of open sourcing the latest cutting edge progress in artificial intelligence research to avoid some potential or at least to minimize some potential doomsday scenarios, which I won't bore you guys with today, but these are things that I lose sleep about. Elon Musk is no longer directly involved with the company. They still continue to do pioneering research. And the idea here is it's better to have this pioneering research out in the open rather than being developed behind closed doors at large tech companies or within governments, etc. And this is truly mind blowing. So let's read through this example as we see GPT-3 translate legalese into plain English. So the example text here that's been fed into GPT-3 is, upon liquidation of the company, the Series A shareholders will receive in preference to all other stakeholders an amount in respect of each Series A share equal to one times the original issue price, the liquidation preference, plus all accrued but unpaid dividends. To the extent that the company has assets remaining after the distribution of that amount, the Series A shareholders will participate with the holders of ordinary shares pro rata to the number of shares held on a converted basis. And as we all know, everyone who's ever read terms and conditions or any legal documents will understand this is the kind of horse shit, ridiculously over the top legalese that causes most people to not even bother reading extremely important legal documents because it's a cluster fuck like this. Look at how eloquently and clearly GPT-3 has converted this wall of legal crap into something that a typical person can understand. If the startup is wound up, the Series A investors will be paid back at least what they invested and they will also share any leftover assets with ordinary shareholders. This is a brilliant condensation of the points here. And once again, I stress, this was done by artificial intelligence. No human being involved. And by the way, many of you folks won't know, but a lot of the media articles you see written now, especially things like sporting results, updates on weather, these kind of things, which are pretty straightforward, a few numbers and facts here and there, are actually written by AI, not human journalists. And this has been going on for a number of years. And often, most times in fact, this is not even disclosed. GPT-3 can also write emails, design web pages, write code in a dozen computer languages, retrieve historical facts, translate languages, diagnose diseases, converse as a therapist, and more. And by the way, this type of conversational AI can have a huge effect. A lot of people, for example, don't feel comfortable talking to a human being about certain things, but if they can have a human-like conversation, say in a therapeutic type of setting with an AI, they can say the right things to really help them, this can have a huge impact. Plus, there's only so many therapists available. AI can scale infinitely. I really want to take an extra moment to just let the implications of what GPT-3 today is capable of sink in. This is incredible. And as I said, we are just getting started. Deep learning is going to transform every industry on planet Earth. As ARK Invest, they believe it's going to create $30 trillion of additional market capitalization in the next 15 to 20 years. The world's most valuable companies today just reach the one or so trillion dollar mark. All right, guys, it's time for the mic drop moment. Deep learning could create more economic value than the internet did. Okay, one more time. Deep learning could be bigger than the fucking internet. Over two decades, the internet added $13 trillion to equity market capitalizations globally. Deep learning has created $2 trillion in market capitalizations as of 2020. And again, I remind you guys, we're in the super early days. ARK believes that deep learning will add $30 trillion to equity market capitalizations during the next 15 to 20 years. Please let that sink in. This thing is bigger than the internet. Market cap creation, internet versus deep learning. We can see the enormous addition of $13 trillion of market cap due to the advent of the internet over approximately 20, 23 years. Call it two decades, two and a half decades, give or take. Currently, deep learning has added just $2 trillion. But by 2037, ARK believes a $30 trillion addition to market capitalization. Look at this, deep learning dwarfing the impact of the internet. Now, I don't want to labor the point here, but do you guys start to get a sense of how truly enormous the opportunity here is for deep learning? 
This is a technology that is going to absolutely transform, disrupt, and revolutionize every industry on earth. This is not hyperbole or exaggeration. I literally mean it. Deep learning will absolutely transform and revolutionize every industry on planet Earth. So, how can investors take advantage of this $30 trillion investment bonanza? Quite simple. Great starting point would be to educate yourself on what deep learning is and its potential. This video is a great starting point, but your job is not done, not even close. If you're really serious about this, which I recommend you should be, as we know, $30 trillion, one more time, that's $30 trillion with a T. If you're an investor who would like to actually make returns in the future, you need to understand this. It's going to have an outsized impact on every business, every company, every industry, every technology, everything. So what are the key ingredients? Well, number one, you should be looking for large opportunities. You know, things like, for example, curing diseases or creating fully self-driving vehicles, that kind of stuff, big opportunities. Number two, you need a large amount of high quality data. For example, Tesla currently and for many years has been deploying vehicles that have a full sensor suite collecting data in the background to train their full self-driving AI to improve it. As the fleet grows, Tesla's data lead grows, and the quality of that data continues to improve, not only with the Dojo training system, but every time there's driver interventions that's sent back home can teach the AI to improve, they can source more edge cases and get better and better and better. So, if you've got a big opportunity, say autonomous vehicles, and you've got a lot of high quality data, you have the recipes for success. The only missing piece of the puzzle then is execution. So to summarize that one more time, one, big opportunity, two, high quality data, three, a lot of it. That's all that's needed, plus a little bit of great execution, and the sky's the limit. Why is Amazon so dominant in retail? Pretty simple, they've got the best data, it's high quality, lots of customers purchasing from the company, literally millions of orders every single day, means Amazon has great data that's being fed into deep learning algorithms to help recommend products and help customers find what they want and need. Why is Google so dominant with search? or even better, with video on YouTube, a more relevant example, because their AI recommendation algorithm is second to none. They've got high quality data. What does this user watch? If they watch this video and then they watch this video, what do they do after that? Is this a good video to recommend? This is the way the YouTube algorithm works. The reason that YouTube is such a compelling platform isn't necessarily because it's got the most content, but they've got the best quality data and they're deploying that to give the best recommendations to users. Once again, I remind you of the YouTube rabbit hole. And the third and final example why I'm so confident Tesla has already won the race to solve fully autonomous vehicles is because their data lead is unassailable. They have orders of magnitude more data and it's better quality data than anyone else on the market. You can't buy that. The only way I see anybody catching up with Tesla, so to speak, on the autonomous vehicle front in the future is licensing Tesla software. What's the point? How are you going to collect the same amount of data? How are you going to deploy millions of vehicles collecting data for you to train your AI if you don't already have the hardware on the vehicles, on the roads, and you're not manufacturing millions more every year? I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I really wanted to drive home the opportunity and the potential for deep learn to transform and disrupt every industry on the planet. The big question now is where are the biggest opportunities in deep learning? If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. What are some industries, some technologies, some platforms, whatever it is that deep learning can enormously disrupt in the future? Where are you seeing the biggest potential? For me, it's autonomous vehicles and it's healthcare. Human longevity, curing of diseases, reversing aging, helping people live longer, healthier lives, and having vehicles that can drive people safely from point A to point B, no matter where they are on the planet. These, in my opinion, are two of the biggest, most obvious places deep learning will have a huge outsized impact. But of course, there's many that I'm probably too dumb to even realize. So let me know what those are in the comments below. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments.
comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.